Hey everyone, I'm Warren Dean from Datatail. In this video, I'm going to show you the top 10 Power BI custom visuals that you should know and use if you haven't before. I posted this up on LinkedIn, this discussion, and these are the top 10 that have come through. So I'm going to give you a run through. I will put this PBIX on my website so that you can download this file and have a go yourself. But if you are interested in these type of videos, please do hit that subscribe button. But otherwise, let's jump into it. So first one we have is the text filter. One of the most used custom visuals that I've seen. The text filter, what it does is allow you to, if I just want to look at a certain city, I can, it's just a wildcard search, so I don't have to enter the full city. I can hit the search button and it's only going to bring up, you know, according to this column, what's in there. You can hit the eraser to get rid of it. Now there is another option that I do sometimes use. This one is referred to as Smart Filter by Ocviz. This one isn't a wild card. So if I type B-A-L-L, -L, it does give you the options, which is good. And the other advantage is I can write multiple options here, Baytown as well. So I can pick more than one, uh, but it doesn't have the wild card search. So either or, depending on what you fancy, um, but I use text filter quite a bit. Second one we're going to look at is the play axes. So play axes, dynamic slicer. Now in this example, what we have here is a scatter chart. And in the scatter chart, by default, it does have the play axes down here. So you can, in this example, I've added in a, a fiscal year and I can run it via this. Um, now, the issue with this is it's not going to run any other visual outside this chart. And it also has this really big, annoying FY 2020, which you can't really format. So this visual here is the play axis. And what it does is it can now, you know, you can use your edit interactions to control what it can control on the screen. I can hit that play button and it's going to update this chart and the one to the left as well. So really handy if you want to tell stories over time or over price or however you want to do it. Uh, the play axes works really well. The chiclet slicer. Uh, chiclet slicer is really good. And sometimes I'll use it just instead of a slicer. Um, because if you can see here, you know, you get the nice looking buttons. Obviously you don't want to have too many options. Um, but, you know, I can increase, decrease the size. I can control how many rows, how many columns. The other thing it also allows you to do in this example here is take images. Um, so here I have URLs from Wikipedia and I can drop the image in here and I can select multiple countries in this data. Um, and you have a nice image. You don't have to have the text there as well. There's a lot of customization, uh, but the chiclet slicer is really good you know give it a shot next time instead of your standard slicer uh, if you want to try something a little bit different or throw some images in there the timeline slicer is another one which is good if people want to slice by different times so maybe they want to slice by week by year by quarter um, you can just drop it all in here just with one date field. So here I'm looking by year. I might want to go by quarter. Maybe I want to drop it down by month. It's getting a little bit big, but you get the point. Um, it allows the end user to determine what they want to slice on. So instead of having you know hierarchical slicer, um, you can use the timeline slicer, which is pretty cool. Next up, we have the tornado chart. The tornado chart is pretty much 
the only thing that I've been able to use to look like a population pyramid and really good for demographics data, which I use a lot. Here we have, you know, age going up and male versus female. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the male is on the wrong side and a little bit of a limitation of this visual. But if you do want to get that kind of population pyramid look, the tornado chart is the one you want to be using. The Beyond Soft Calendar. There's quite a few different calendar options as custom visuals. Um, this is the one I probably use the most. Uh, it's quite simple to use and it gives you the ability to, you know, use conditional formatting as a color to highlight certain days of the week. So here we can see, you know, the red is the most spends. So on Saturdays and Sundays, and for some reason in midweek, I'm getting some very high spends. Um, so it's really good to look at a certain month. It only shows you one month, but I can look at that month and at a quick view, look at which days over the month I'm getting the highest sales using colors. So that one's the Beyond Soft Calendar. Uh, the Word Cloud Custom Visual is one I use a lot if I'm doing survey data. Um, and if you've got free text, there's not a lot of visuals that you can understand free text um, besides the word cloud. And here I can look via different categories and see some of the products within a category. Obviously that would be a lot better if it was free text and maybe I wanted to look at, you know, a different suburb, a different state or country and see people's responses what uh, words are they bringing out the most. Uh, something to note with this one is you do have in the options here, stop words. So stop words is good. So like I've already turned off default stop words like and and the, if I want to get rid of that 52, um, I can get rid of that as well. So if there's any common words that are distorting it, um, it has the stop words option, which is good. Uh, Synoptic Panel by Ocviz is a really awesome custom visual. It allows you to take any type of image and then create a chart. So here I have a room or rooms within a venue and I'm highlighting the colors based on the usage of the rooms. Um, so there's a lot of other options in the gallery that you can choose from in here. Um, some other examples, but you can see any image you want to use if you want to create it into a chart um, You can do so so really good for floor plans here. So like the general store or human body uh, Really endless possibilities with the synoptic panel. So if you haven't seen that one check it out Cards with states and another by Ocviz is a really good one if you want to you know measure those KPIs and put it in cards. You have the standard card, uh, the standard visual, which is pretty limited in what it can do. The cards of states allows you to you know kind of have a, a trend line here. So here I have order quantity and I have a target, and it also allows you to color the target. So you can set in your options in here um, the conditions. And here I've got, you know, if it's over 100, it's green. So I can set the KPIs that I want to measure. So Cards with States by Ocviz, another one I highly recommend uh, because you can use the colors and you can also have trend lines within your cards as well, which is really cool. There is a lot of different card options out there, but this is one that I use quite a lot. And next one we have is Zebra BI. Uh, Zebra BI has charts and tables. Um, this one is, is free, but can require some additional purchases if you want to get the full use of it. Um, but it's really good for financial data and comparing here. I'm looking at this financial year compared to the previous financial year. And, you know, it just does these really simple comparisons. Um, so easy to use, drag and drop, um, and it does this for you. Um, you can see there, I can I can get a trial if I want to see some of the other ways you want to look at it. Um, but here I'm looking at, you know, United States. What was it this year? What was it the previous year? And here I can do the same in a chart. And here it's giving me the percentage breakdown and the previous year compared to the actual year. 
um, really powerful custom visuals. If you haven't heard of Zebra VI, I encourage you to go and, and check it out and download the trial and have a look at it. And the last one is the Hierarchy Slicer. Um, so I've put it in here because a lot of people on LinkedIn mentioned the Hierarchy Slicer, and I used to use this one a lot as well, uh, because within Power BI, you couldn't have multiple fields. Um, so you had to use the Hierarchy Slicer to do that. So here within Australia, and we have different suburbs within Australia. Um, but if you're on the latest release of Power BI, you don't really need to use a hierarchy slicer anymore because this is now native within Power BI. I can add as many fields here that I want, um, postcode. And you can see here, I can have different layers. So hierarchy slicer would, would be one that I did used to recommend, but now it's native within Power BI, which is great. You can now have multiple layers within your slicer. So thanks everyone. Don't forget you can download this PBIX on my blog. Um, if you've got any comments, any questions, leave them down below. Otherwise, I'll catch you later.